It's the Rod and Fez Show. That's Sleeves with Earl the Fainting Goat. You can check out all of Sleeves stuff. That's not Sleeves, is it? Oh, uh, it's Fez Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. Fez Paul from uh, Post Tours. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. It is the Ron and Fez Show. Fez, there is a post up about you right now on um, Whack Bag, and it basically says an open letter to Fez. Dear Fez... During the What Do You Want segment of January 3rd, I sought your advice what to get my dad for his 75th birthday. You told me a quilt with pictures of his grandchildren on it would be a nice gift. The Tutsure ashtray debacle made me a little reluctant to take your advice. Uh, he blah, blah, blah. I was thinking about getting his dad a very nice single malt scotch. His dad enjoys sipping scotch but won't spend more than $15 in the Bible on a bottle. In the end, I put my faith in Fez. 500 bucks later, I got a custom-made quilt complete with machine-embroiled images of his 10 grandkids. Dad turned 75 February 22nd. We're having a family gathering on the weekend of the 17th to celebrate. Everybody's going to be there. My gift-giving reputation and my opinion of Fez now hangs in the balance. What do you think, Fez? How's it going to go over? I think he made the right decision going with the grandchildren quilt for his dad's 75th. Over a single malt scotch. Totally over the scotch. Anyone uh, can get him scotch. Here's my little prediction for this. Yes, everyone could get him scotch, but doesn't. That's just like when people go, well, anyone could get Ron Cuban cigars. So I got you something you don't want. Get me cigars. That's all I want. Everything else is a waste of money. His dad's the same way with the scotch. I would have been the same way with the scotch, but um, no problem with it. All right, Earl, how do you think it's going to go over? I would. I. I don't think it's going to go over well. I think I would give him the scotch. I think he's going to act like he likes it, and all the women are going to act like they like it, and everybody will make a big deal out of it. But it's wasted. Oh. It's a waste of five hundred dollars. I think it's going to be a huge hit. I think his dad there may be even a tear in his eye when he sees it. Here's the other point. Yes, you're go I had a tear in my eye when you gave me that fucking ashtray of just really saying to myself, I don't have a real best friend. I've got some broken lipped, chap lipped fucking uh, outsider <laughs> who gets me weird shit. It's cold outside and my lips chapped. You, would you want to get some chapstick for yourself? I keep forgetting to go pick it up. Earl, come here and look at him. He's got dry lips. They've cracked and busted open. And now i got to do this show why he licks his bloody lip. It's disgusting to me. Well, I'm trying to get it to quit bleeding. Can I tell you what I think of this? And again, the man, like I did with you, Fez. Remember, I acted like I liked your ashtray. Right. He won't. Now, this is... All right, Earl, take a look at his lips. Oh. 
Oh my God! Yeah, isn't that disgusting? Yeah, I mean they're like, but they're even the there's all these little cut. I've never seen them cut that bad either. Yeah, they're all sliced open from the cold. He walks down that windy fucking uh, island of his. I end up doing a little mouth breathing too, so it doesn't help. You gotta breathe through the nose, fuzzy. I know, but a lot of times I can't. But I mean, into the microphone, not that fucking mouth breathing that you're doing. And the noises, the noises have got to stop. The emails are coming. Um, here's what I think. This is a gift for a woman from a woman. This is something you give that your chick gives to your grandmother, not a son gives to a father. Again, everyone is going to act like they like it, but it's not masculine. All right, it may not be masculine, but it's definitely sentimental for a guy who's 75 years old and has 10 grandchildren. And then he's going to see this really nice, what I would call an artistic piece with his grandchildren's images on it. He's going to get this and think, this is what they plan to bury me in. It's fucking embarrassing and it's feminine. All right, here's Hater. Here's uh, Fez, maybe, as you would call it, your other. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Fez. Two weeks and counting. The gift goes down, so do you. I want my money back if it doesn't go over well. Hey, they're going to act like it's it's a wonderful thing because the kids are going to be there and everyone's going to act like it's okay. But in the back of your dad's mind, this is going to remind him of death. That's why he doesn't vote. My three brothers. You are... Brutally honest. Imagine having three Opies in your family. All right. Have they seen That's it yet? judgment right there. Nope. Just say this to them. This is something for Dad's coffin. Beautiful. Because in my family, you put a quilt in the coffin with the people. Really? We don't want to fucking freeze. It's fucking cold underground. Uh, We do that, cigarettes, whiskey, and some money. I don't know why to to pay the ferryman, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, Hey, good luck with this, buddy. I hope it works out for you. 21-year-old scotch, Fez. That would have been the gift he could have had. for your old man to sit there, watch some sports, and sip scotch like a gentleman for the first time in his life. I think oh, you totally beautiful. made the right decision, hater. Congratulations. You'll know in two weeks. All right, peace out, buddy. Clock's ticking, pal. Bye. I wish you all the best with it, because that's, that's fucking nerve-wracking when you know you bought something gay, and it's going to make everyone feel effeminate. Uh, Dan, Dan, you're on the Hey, since you're talking about gifts, I wanted to know how it went with Earl giving his dad that book signed by Kareem. Oh, yeah. Earl doesn't even bring it up. Earl? My father absolutely loved the book. He was so touched by the fact that Kareem signed it for him, and he he's, he immediately just started reading it. He, he he was beside himself. He was stunned that I met Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh-huh. and even more so that he signed a book for him. Now, why would you come back and tell us this? No, it was just something that, you know, I mean... It, I don't know. It was funny because it was just kind of a personal moment between my father and I. And I see. It was just kind of a... Now, this personal moment, how did it take place? How it, did it happen? It happened through here, but... It happened through here. This motherfucker, Fez, I want to wring his neck. I say, I take my book. I say, Earl, have this sign for your dad. Kareem doesn't even like to sign books. We go and give it to his publicist, and the publicist has it signed, Right? He says it happens here. He doesn't remember. I'm the one who got him to have this moment with his dad. But every fucking bad thing I do... Well, Ron was pretty hard on me today. Ron really busted my stones good today. I was there that day. Yeah. Earl was turning into feigning goat mode at any moment. He was so nervous around Kareem. Ron basically forced him to into this thing so his dad could have a nice gift. Just so I could get your dad something nice from you because you don't fucking think. Now you're acting like it's personal between you and your dad. Oh, man, I'm not just saying that particular that particular moment at that time. The, yeah, the, the I have personal part. feelings. If somebody would have given, helped me get to that point with my dad, well, I know you must be. Just a gigantic failure in your dad's eyes. You turn your <laughs> you turn your back on your race, and I know your mom's not happy about the name Black Girl that Opie hung on you. Maybe this is a chance for him to say, "Hey, this is something nice." Then they go back to the guy who lined it up for you, who thought of it, me. No, I and I absolutely appreciate it. I'm, I'm very grateful, Ron. You you always you always look out for me, and, and, I, yet, and I appreciate it. Would it be hard to get a thank you? Not. Instead of begging for the thank you no, not, and have to ha- hear it happen from here. As if this fucking book fell off a goddamn cloud. 
Well, I wasn't finished yet. And oh, I want to thank you. Well, why don't you get to your point faster than you stumbling, bumbling motherfucker? If you walk like you talk, we'd lock you up for being drunk. Just wanted to thank you, Ronnie, for... for the Too fucking late! I had to drag it out of you! Ronnie was listed as here, this place, in the credits. Here's my thing, Earl. When a woman has a fucking orgasm, I want her to tell me. I don't want to fucking guess. I'm not playing to guess and work with you. Stumbling, bumbling prick. I'm absolutely grateful. He, I swear to God, if he walked like he talked, Fezzi, he'd hit every wall in the fucking room <laughs> walking down a hallway. He's oh, a you're a pain in the ass. Oh, I want to fucking choke him out sometimes. And this Black History Month is the only thing that saves you. Uh, Matt, Matt, you're on Fez. Hey, what's up? This quilt thing is going to go down like this. This old man's going to pretend he likes it, mm. and then he's going to find out at some point that it costs 500 fucking dollars, right. and he's going to flip the fuck out. I would. Because old people cannot comprehend spending that much money on something like that. Yeah, because to them, that's rent. You know what I mean? It, like They're like, $500, that's my first car. To them, it's like, my wife makes these. Like, right. <laughs> and he's uh, going to think that his son made it. It's going to see so... I, I don't know, maybe because I'm not a visual person... I don't even like pictures. I know what the fuck my kids look like. What do I need to have their pictures here for? And now here's a quilt you can't sleep with. Yeah, this is nice. Let's go on the back of a couch or something on display. He's going to love this thing. I think it's going to be an emotional moment. Are you such a fucking hayseed that you put quilts on the back of your fucking couches? Yes. Everybody doesn't do that? <sighs> Cracker Barrel does fucking shit like that. So you sit there and watch Hee Haw. Uh, cigars and Scotch, you're on Fez. Hey, instead of being able to enjoy the Scotch the following day, here's what's going to happen with the quilt. He's going to open it, say thank you, put it on a shelf in the same box it was given, and it won't be seen again until he dies and they clear out his house. Right. And then they'll and be like, oh, remember this old faded fucking quilt? Uh, reminds, yeah, then nobody want to look at it anymore because it's going to remind them of Grandpa being dead. Why don't you just give him a tombstone? It's a terrible thing to give out. You want to have something to make life go better. Not, here, look back on the way your life was. You might as well give him a fucking ashtray. He doesn't even keep it at his house. He's got, they're using it as a change fucking dish in the uh, other room. That should be at your home. That was a nice gift I gave you with a lot of thought going into it. It would really, it's really only worth the thanks that it elicits, Fez. And it was taken as an insult, and I honestly believe it's the way it was given. It was not given as an insult. No uh, way. I told that to my old man. You know what he said to me? What? You gotta be fucking kidding me. He goes, You propped this corpse up for the last couple of years, and he's given you a ceramic ashtray? Well, that hurts. Didn't expect to hear that one. Then he goes, oh, what happens when Eastside Dave comes down? What does Fezzy do? Take a nap? I go, no. He just likes to give leeway. Um, Here's uh, Daryl. Daryl, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Ron and Fez. It's Daryl from Winnipeg. Hey, uh, Ron, what about the book that um, Earl's going to get signed from Ron Wood? He can give that to his dad in the future. I know, Earl thinks he's got a book against every three months and everybody's going to love him. Because we put you over so big on the days that you do it. But it, it comes around like a holiday. Well, I don't want it to come around like a holiday. I try to get it to happen on a regular basis. Just works out that I way. I want that book back from your old man. I want you to go over there and pull it right out of his hands and say, this belongs to Ron. I, I, he'll be really upset. He'll hate me for the rest of his life. Maybe you'll tell that fucking story. Instead of now loving you for the rest of his life. To show him the picture of you and Kareem? Yes. Uh, Fez was so disappointed Kareem sat down for the picture. I know. I just wanted his immenseness to be in the picture with us. Maybe he didn't want to be seen as a freak every day of his life. <laughs> just one more day. <laughs> just one more freak day is all I want. Uh, Eric, you're on Fez. Hey, buddies. Yeah. Big-ass member 3255. What's happening, boy? Wanted to, wanted to find out from the writer whether uh, his little girlfriend there got the gift from Earl. Yeah, I never heard this story either, uh, Ryder. Tell us. We are short on thank yous around here. Yep. 
No, uh, apparently the gift still hasn't arrived. I did, the writer did talk to his lady last night. And we had a little bit of a conversation. No gift. The writer's looking pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad. Uh, why are we plugging those fucking things on Free FM? Well, I was told the exact opposite this morning. This morning, I was told the exact opposite of what Did the Did you writer. check with the writer? Well, if it happened this morning, it wasn't yesterday, though. That's the point. Yesterday was Monday. She was supposed to get it on Saturday, then Monday. It didn't happen, Daddy. Oh, does the writer look poor in this situation, Thaffa? Should we go on and rip this fucking company on the air tonight? Earl, is that the only way around this? I mean, again, what I'm... It's I'm... just as easy as plugging. Hey, boys, be careful. <laughs> Don't give out a gift that won't get there on time. I got a phone call at 8.45 this morning about all of this stuff, and I was assured that... From who, the future? No. Who <laughs> called you? Two weeks from now? <laughs> no, I got a, I got a call from, um, from, the, from the sales department. Well, then you call the sales department back and say, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm running out around all night with the Black Crows instead of checking up on my team, but it uh, didn't happen. And was your girlfriend seeming like she was being nice to you, Ryder? Yes, she was, actually. Yeah. She, she wanted me to, to put a message to Ron and Fez. I don't hate Ron and Fez. Bullshit. I, I just hate you at this point. Bullshit. That's actually what she said, though. Verbatim. You told us that she hated us. I did, because I think that was the case, yes. But I must be truthful with now you. Now she got over it. Uh, I think maybe her anger with you has subsided and she's pissed off at me. Well, that was awfully quick and convenient. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, you're running Fez. Hey, brothers, how's it going? Good, man. Hey, uh, Fez, you're such a fucking fag, dude. Nobody gives their dad a quilt. Your mom, okay, not your dad. And number two, no fucking straight man puts a quilt on the back of his fucking couch. I thought everyone put a quilt on the back of their couch. It's you and Jethro Bodine. Who would do that to their couch? Don't you want a quilt there in case you need it? In case you get cold or something, or you want to lay down on the couch, take a nap? You got a nice, expensive couch. Why do you want an old fucking quilt up there? You could put a nice one with all your grandchildren's pictures on it. Pictures on it? No, I don't think there is such a thing as a nice, embroidered fucking quilt with people's pictures on it. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? Put it over there next to the fucking pump that you bought? It doesn't even make sense. Uh, John, John, you're on running Fez. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, so it's breaking up out here. Now, I just want to say about uh, Earl. Uh, you guys, if Muni would have done something like that for him, he would be praising him up and down, man. It really is true. And it's yeah, so it's much true. the book, but we forced the fucking guy to have a moment with his dad. A dad who he's done nothing but disappoint his whole life. I've been disappointed, well, not all my life, but I mean, I've been a Do you give him any grandbabies? No, I haven't. He's got enough. He's got 17 of them. Wow. What a fucking cliche. From two other kids. And who knows how many outside grandbabies he's got. <laughs> I'm sure he's got some Asian ones from your brother. I know. The man that you, and you know what? Here's the other thing. If anyone would have sat here today and told me my brother was uh, going to end up in hell, I'd have went fucking crazy defending him. You're like, hey, he picked his life. He belongs there. Let him burn. You know better than the KKK, Earl. You're all about burning black people. Don't burn black people. and I, I always stand up for my brother. I love him to death. I didn't hear you today. You said it would be okay with you if he burned forever. No, I said he was. He made a choice in his life. I try to talk him out of it, talk him into it all the time. What are you talking him into? Well, you know, you know, embracing the faith because he's more agnostic than anything else. And I always try to talk him into it. Harry, you're on Ronnie Fez. How you doing, Ronnie? Yeah. I can't believe all these ungratefuls you got working around you. I know. But any, anyways, I got uh, taken care of that uh, thing you wanted me to take care of down in Fairfax, Virginia. Oh, good. The cemetery plot and a headstone. Yeah. But I want, I want to know, how come they call it uh, Fairfax County uh, Waste Disposal? Uh, don't worry about that. It's just a little something I got planned for you, Fess. Do not get any sort of cemetery plot for me in Northern Virginia. Don't worry about it. I have another cheese omelet and bacon. I'll take care of everything. Dude, I do not want to be buried in Northern Virginia. Everyone here, my final wishes. 
and you're going to be buried face down so the rats can butt fuck you. Here's uh, Jack. Just wrong. Is it? Then why'd you live your life that way? Jack, you're on Ronnie Fez. Ronnie, you're my hero. Mm, thank you. About time somebody straightened the sapphire out. And Fezzy really screwed up on his quilt. In what way? Well, what's he going to do when that old man has another granddaughter or grandson and then that kid's going to feel left out? Right, exactly. Why ain't I on the quilt? Well, you're not important. Fez Watley didn't deem you important. Oh, Fez will come back with a pillow with that fucking kid on it. That's life. That's what happens. Families grow. Not every pi not every relation is in every picture. Your families don't grow. Just you sitting there by yourself over there on Retard Island with a quilt with no pictures on it. <sighs> I put on some weight. No, you haven't. Why, yeah. are gonna, why are you going to say that about yourself? Do me a favor. Get some magic marker and cover up that lip. It's fucking driving me crazy. I totally need some chapstick. I just keep forgetting to stop in the drugstore and get it. Hmm. You don't forget to stop for that dirty water dog, do you, Stenty? You make sure you pick up two of them on the way home. Well, they're right there. Paper boy. You're on a fez. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. What's up, buddy? What can we do for you? Oh, I just wanted to uh, tell Fez he should go down to the store and get some of this Blistex lip infusion for his chuck lips. This stuff is works terrifically. All right, I'll get the Blistex infusion. Sounds like a collagen shot or something. Do me a favor, too. Just get a blood test done. They don't do that at the drugstore. Go wherever you need to get one done. I don't like the looks of it right now. And stop licking at it. It's grossing me out. I can't. I see you licking your bloody, salty, chapped up lip. Now that it's right there, I got a wound to lick. I might be sending you home. Either that, or get me a knife. I'm cutting his bottom lip off. And it feels like it's still bleeding. Are you sure that didn't happen from a bear of balls? No, it did not happen from balls. It looks like you've been ball bruised there. No, I don't think balls would split my lip. That's some pair of balls. How often do you yell that out? Oh, God, I'm so disgusted with the show. Look at you. One of you in a fucking yellow mask and a girl's hat. The other one, a lip that's so fucking disgusting it couldn't even get on regular TV. And Earl. Slack-jawed, slack-spined motherfucker not being able to keep up with your own life. Keep up with my life just fine. Oh, Earl, don't let me sit here and fucking tell what's been going on behind the scenes. I'll yank the curtain back while you're sitting there taking a shit. Because that's what you do for six hours a day. You take a shit over there. Here is, uh... Close that curtain, Earl's on the toilet. Well, you're fucking face up too, aren't you? Sniffing around over there. Radio Shark. Hey, Shark, how are you, buddy? Let's hear your disgusting thing. What if that 75-year-old guy sleeps naked with that quilt? That means he's going to be rubbing up against his grandchildren's faces, rolling around, farting. Huh? That's not a good gift. We don't know what goes on in Hater's family, Radio Shark. We don't know. I think he's going to love this gift. Well, you should find out before you suggest these gifts then, huh? That's true, before you go shooting your mouth off and making people spend 500 How can you ask the guy if he'd like the gift if it's a surprise? And in the meantime, you spend $14 for my fucking uh, Christmas gift. I spent a lot more on yours. We saw it on eBay. Went for 16 bucks. I saw what it was going for, but trust me, I spent a lot more. And then you're stupid. Who would, buy, who would pay money on a ceramic fucking ashtray to a place I've never been before? Yeah, but it was a nice piece of memorabilia there. I thought you would like it. How would I like it? It's not... The memorabilia is not from someone I remember. I don't even know that fucking guy. Well, it's historic. It's showbiz historic. If it's historic, it'd be in a fucking museum. And what great show business thing took place there? A lot of legends hung out there. A lot of showbiz and sports legends hung out there at Toot Shores. They ate at McDonald's, too. You gonna bring me a McDonald's ashtray? No. You don't even make it sense anymore. I don't know whether all the blood has left your brain and went into your lip. Oh, that fucking lip. Is it like, still going? Looks like the Badlands. Fucking disgusting. Well, I don't have time to run and get my Blistex, and no one's going for me. 
I just know you're going to fall down in that apartment one day and no one's going to be there to help you. I just fucking know it. And then everyone's going to blame me. Like, why did you leave him alone? Why did you let his body rot? Because the way your health is going, that lip could be what ends up killing you. If anything happens to me, I'll write in my own lip blood on the floor, don't blame Ron. Do me a favor, and I'm not ever going to tell you how you uh, live your life. Right. Next time, wash the guy's cock. Because something is on your lip right now that could only come from a dirty fucking wiener. It's it's 15 degrees outside. That's what chapped my lip. Oh, it's 15 degrees outside. Why don't you run out and smoke some fucking guy's dick you don't even know? How about this? You fucking form some kind of friendship. I want you away from the glory holes. Ryder, follow him around and make sure he doesn't go near a glory hole. Can be done and will be. And then get a pair of scissors, cut your stupid fucking mask off, and start acting like an adult. I don't know what you're talking about, Ronnie B. Mark, you're running for us. Mark, what do you got for us, buddy? Yeah, how you doing, guys? Uh, hey, Fez, I was wondering, um, why don't you just go ahead and cut it off? It'll uh, help you suck dick a little bit easier. You know what? I'm going to point this out right now. And I hope uh, Earl Summit, he hates those kind of calls, makes him furious, and he blames the writer. I've been watching. you got this dry, protruded, cracked lip, and I'm watching little pieces fly off there onto the microphone that Opie uses later. I got a little lip dandruff is the problem. It's very dried out. <sighs> Bobo, how are you, buddy? Hi, you buddy. Hi, pal. I'm good. I wanted to suggest that maybe it's time to start calling Fez old leper lips. Well, you want to go with that, Fez leper lips? No, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But I know Bobo will call in with a mean thing to say. But if I mention the painting he did for me, Ronnie will get emails all night long. But it's okay for Bobo to do. What are you saying? Why do you got to be like that and attack him? I haven't attacked him. I haven't attacked him. He's the one who called in with old leopard lips. The painting that he made for you was beautiful. Yes, I love it a lot. But if I made one little joke about it or anything, made a comment about it, then... You said you were going to throw it in the trash. Then he would be in a downward spiral. But old Bobo. leopard lips is fine. Bobo. His joke yeah, was he was going to throw your artwork in the trash, was it not? Well, he also turned it to the wall like a prison rape. I mean, he... <laughs> Have you seen it? Oh, I, I, I painted it. Of course I saw it. Of course he did, Fuzzy. It's beautiful. It's got your own beard hair in it. Yeah, yeah, that's right off my own face. Yeah, it's very innovative. I and like it, it Bo. If not frightening. It was hard to do that. I know it was. I had to learn how to do that. They have classes you know, on that? Yeah, it's called gluing. Talismanic. Well, art you mastered it, big man. You pulled it off. You got your Elmer's degree. I like when you call me big man. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And then tonight, uh, to, tonight, Ronnie will get an email. Tomorrow, I will have to hear about it. Now, why don't I go ahead and apologize now and save us 24 hours' time for hurting your feelings? I love the painting. Well, I love you too, Leper Lips. <laughs> Now, Fezzy, I've been in a great mood all day. I've been sitting around, I'm complimenting everybody, and all of a sudden you turn dark on us. No, I'm not dark. I'm just You're a little dark. I'm just pointing out the way things go with Bobo. The the pattern of behavior. Bobo, are you gonna be up there on the twenty third? Yeah, I put in uh put in my reservation and me and uh Tom the cop are coming and uh I know some others from down here are coming too. Some of the D C gang? Yeah. I can't wait to see it, pal. Me too. It's going to be fun. All right. Talk to you soon, Bobo. Okay. Love you, Leper Lips. Bye-bye. All right. Jeez. See? 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 I and tried I to make it a nice moment at the end. Right. Yeah, you tried. Yeah. And I guarantee you, he's doing the Leper Lips <laughs> thing. You will get an email tonight. <laughs> That's hurt my feelings. You, you, can I tell you something? Sometimes you hurt my feelings too, Fuzzy. You're quick with that wit of yours, but it's like a sword. It just... It whips around. It's like an epi. An epi, if you will. And it just slashes. And it's 
It's it cuts to the quick. Well, I like Bobo a lot, but he calls in. To, you do? Yes. I would hate to see the way you pe treat people you don't like. But he'll call in with leopard lips, and then he'll cry if someone says something back to him. All right, Bobo. Okay. Talk to you later, pal. I thought you had okay. hung up already. No. He no, has. I'm still listening. You're the best, pal. The now Fez my loves soul you. feels the way your lip looks. All right. That's enough, you two. I'm going to break this up. Talk to you later. The thing is... Why Have that... you hung up on him now? No. <laughs> the thing is, Fezzy, with your lip like that, it makes you defenseless, you know? I They understand. can just bring up the lip. I get it. Uh, Bill, Bill, you're on running Fez. 29.875, my brothers. Hey, bro. hoo -ha! Hey, uh, Ronnie, right now you can get a, a nice red Tutshore ashtray on eBay for 10 bucks. Or, if, if it's more interesting, you can get uh, 12 vintage glass swizzle sticks from Tutshore for $12. Fuck. Why don't you do this? Give me $100 and get me a table out of there. You got it. All right, peace out. I don't know why anybody would anything. Would I, do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen. Never buy me anything from Touch Shores off eBay. I don't understand it. I don't know what it has to do with. And I'm still waiting for my real Christmas present. Well, if we had laid down that rule from the beginning. And besides, I didn't go off of eBay. Well, you should have because they're very cheap. Very cheap. Did you just fart? <laughs> no. He just, just fucking farted. I scooted up and that was a chair squeaking. I heard it through the headphones. That is a chair squeaking. Do not even accuse me, Ron Bennington. <laughs> the man who hates the fart just fucking let one go. That is this chair. It's very squeaky. Oh, I don't even think it's my regular chair. Earl. Breeze me because it fucking stinks in here. You don't smell anything. <laughs> Knock it off. I might have to go to break. Oh, my God. What were you eating today? So, oh, everyone comes running with Febreze and air fresheners. I've been asking for chapstick for a half hour. Hold on. Wait. Yeah, that smells like aborted fetus. Did you fucking eat it? an aborted fetus? I did not have fetus for breakfast. <sighs> Jesus, your ass. Smells like the fucking hippo cage. <coughs> that is not my ass. I did not fart in here. Did you hear it, uh, Ryder? Could you hear I, it through your headphones? I absolutely heard it, yes. Yeah. A, a small little pop. <laughs> yeah, like a girl's fart. Yeah, pop. It was a girl's fart. Like a fucking Girl Scout fart. It was this chair. All right, I can't seem to make it do it again, but it was this chair, I guarantee you. It was your ass. Why are you, why are you so ashamed? It was my ass on this chair. You farted so so loud, your bottom lip cracked open. That's not where I farted out of. Oh, you're disgusting. Dr. Tommy, you're on Run Fez. Good morning, Bubba Boys. How are you today? Dr. Tommy, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, can you hear me? Houston? Me. Tommy? Houston, can you hear me? Come in, Houston. Tommy? Houston, come in, Houston. Tommy, can you hear me? Tommy, Tommy, hey, uh, Mark, Mark, you're on the Ron Fez show. Yeah, if you're going to look to somebody, you know, to get advice on a good gift to get, you don't ask a farter like the herpy lip. I am not you a farter nor a herpy lip. Yeah, somebody like was class, like big A. Big A. Oh, big please. I really wanted to make big A the ring announcer, and you're all against that. Yes, ring announcer. Do you know what the ring announcer has to do? Well, he brings the crowd some excitement. He builds it up and brings the fighters out, and it's all fun. Yes, we don't have time for an eight-hour buildup. If he's announcing the wrestlers. First Bobo, then big A. Why do you have to attack the sensitive? Uh, first of all, in Bobo's case, the sensitive attacked me. I think we all remember old Leper Lips. I thought that was your nickname. That's what he called me. He started it. Uh, Sean, you're on Fez. Hey, Ron. Hey, yeah. Queefy. Hey, Queefy, thanks for uh, waking me up from my nap there. Shoot! I did not, Queef. I probably shouldn't even have to say that. It sounded just like that, like you were sitting in a tub of warm water. I never heard a man's fart sound like that before. That's because it wasn't a fart, Ron. 
What was it? It was this chair. It's not a rubber chair that you're sitting on. It's got some sort of material here. I just can't make it make the same noise again. I can't make it squeak. Try to squ uh, squish it through your asshole. That's how you'll make <laughs> the same noise. That did not come from inside me. Uh, Todd, Todd, you're on a fez. Hey, I think uh, Fez owes me a hundred bucks there. He blew out my subwoofer there. Seriously, Fez. I didn't blow out anyone's speakers with my fart. You know why? Because I didn't fart, people. I want everyone across the XM Nation to know this. I didn't fart. They heard it. They heard that little toot that you had. Ma that little ladylike toot. Maybe my problem was, when I heard the noise, I stopped in mid-sentence, like it jolted me. I should have just kept you, on talking. You started crying. I think it scared you. It sounded like a fart from Dolly Madison. It was a very early American <laughs> ladylike fart. I appreciate the kindness there, but it wasn't a fart. Uh, Tom... Tom, you're on running fast. How are you? Ronnie. Yeah. Did Fezzy fart wake up Earl? You gotta shit down Earl's fucking pie hole to wake him up. And the Grand Canyon could let one in. That's not gonna disturb him. It's a personal moment uh, between my father and I, and I would like to really thank this place. Oh, you're an awful fucking person, Earl. I'm, it wasn't awful. I didn't want to cut. It came out the wrong way, and I wasn't finished with my statement. You have no generosity with your own feelings. That's what's wrong with you. You self-centered prick. Very grateful. Now I understand what the rider tells me, what Pitsy tells me, Lily Shell, everyone who supposedly works under you. They get nothing back from you. You have zero human fucking uh, abilities to love. I don't know if that's a phrase. I don't think it is. You got zero human abilities to love, Earl. I, to I think it gets the point across. I have a complete capacity to love. I love all these guys. Uh, hey, Chris, Chris, you're on the face. Hi, I'm Buddies. Yeah. Hey, I don't know if I can go in the prize closet because I just heard Fezzy's asshole cry. There was no teardrop. I'm going to have Ryder take you to the bathroom and check your underwear. No, he will not. Uh, Dave, Dave, you're on the face. Hey, Fezzy, uh, what type of present did you get your parents last year for that anniversary? Um, actually, they had a big anniversary last year, so they got their party was their uh, was their anniversary present. Yeah, everyone likes a party with stuff. no gifts. You couldn't do better than that, Fez, you cheap prick. They enjoyed their party up until one of the speakers had talked to Ron Bennington about uh, things to say. The fact that I helped, that's a problem? Well, what you helped was with misinformation. And you had a, this guy talking about characters I've played on this show, which I never did. Things like the Roman Helmet and the Cleveland Steamer and the Pittsburgh Platter. I should have uh, brought back Francis the Fanny Farter because that's basically what you are right now. It's not my character. Bastard, you're running Fez. It's not in my character. Hey, I was getting a little scared. I saw, uh, I saw there was another gas car around New York and realized, well, I, I guess it's all right because it's just Fez farting. You know what, Fuzz? You're the only man I've ever known who acts like he doesn't fart. I don't. Uh, women lie, but men don't. And then we just heard you. Um, I did. You didn't hear it. That was this chair, this cheap chair that's in here. That's the problem, really, if you want to get down to brass tacks. Calm down. Enough of your fucking lip dandruff is spinning around the room. It's grossing me out. And no, I'm not big on farting in public. I'm not, you know. Yeah, I you do it on the air like a beast. I don't like to toot my own horn, as it were. Oh. Ronnie B., if you're familiar with these chairs, I think they tend to squeak. Exactly. Fez is with more of a pop. Right. Pop. A little a delicate pop. Yeah. They quit doing impressions of it. That's not me farting. Maybe that was just your first one, Fez. Just like a little tremor, a sign of things to come. Maybe you're just going to rip your own ass out on the air. There's not a 9.0 coming. Oh, just let it go, Fezzy. I don't, go. I don't have any gas to let go. I'm fine. Matt, Matt, you're on running Fez. Yeah, hey, guys. Um, I Actually, I have a suggestion for Farty McBallburn lips. Um, if he starts looking on eBay now, maybe by Christmas time coming up, he can get a whole set of flatware for you from two uh, shares <laughs> this time for Christmas. I'm sure it's out there. Just marvelous, Matt. Wonderful call. Thank you. The guy just said the thing was going for 10 bucks. 
Yes, but I paid a lot more for your ashtray. Why? Why would you pay something more rather than paying the going right, which is ten bucks? Well, I didn't see it on eBay. I didn't even go to eBay. I bought it some other website. Some other website. Where? Lie.com? Lie to your partner.com? Some collectibles thing. I typed in two chores ashtrays. Why would you? <laughs> or two well, shorts. I typed in two shorts. Why would you put toots? Toots, by the way. Yeah. No one's name is Tootsie. Uh, well, Desmond. But why would you think to yourself, Ron would like an ashtray from a fucking club that was around before he was born? Where's your fucking head right now? I thought we went to see the documentary uh, done by his uh, granddaughter. I have seen... 30 documentaries in the last year. I never thought to myself, I'd love an ashtray from one of those fucking documentaries. This is why I refuse to go out with you. Maybe the other uh, documentaries didn't have restaurants involved. This uh, one that you're talking about that you love so much hasn't even been released to the theaters. It did not get picked up. It doesn't change the fact that we had a good time that night. I have a good time every night. Finally, once you left your house, you acted like we were at Disney World. We're on the Upper West Side. Earl, do you feel even slightly embarrassed? I don't know. I'm very embarrassed. About what? Not fucking bringing back about the book thing? Uh, Todd, Todd, you're in Fez. Or that your reviews hey. tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, guys. How's it going? Yeah. I was just uh, calling Ron. I mean, to change the subject, but with that whole thing with Earl and what you did for him with that book... You know, I bet you East Side Dave would probably show a little bit more appreciation if you were to do that for him. Well, uh, we already embarrassed uh, East Side Dave and and also the writer, too, so we're really on a fucking tangent around here. F Troop is having a banner week. A banner week for F Troop. I don't think we're F Troop. I'm not Egon. No, you're like one of the fucking Indians. I want you to start wearing an Indian headdress in here. You're always saying you're one sixteenth Cherokee. Yeah, my family goes back that far, apparently, allegedly. To what tribe? Let me guess, Blackfoot? No, not the Blackfoot. What are you? Black Sioux? <laughs> Black Apache? I believe the, the I believe it is Cherokee. Of course, everyone always says Cherokee because they fucking lie. But this, you've heard it here, a little history lesson for you. We never knew this, but at one point, slaves used to rape Indians. Because Earl is 116th Cherokee. Never heard of the slaves raping Indians. How else would they get one? They weren't going to rape the whites. They do. They're going to get strung up for it. Paul Yarman Fez. Ah, howdy there, Bubba boys. How Bubba butt A's? Oh, uh, yeah. I I'm not going to let you. It's O&A's fucking thing. Give it to those fucking props to ONA. Please. Follow along. Uh, Chris, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Hey, uh, Francis, the father, make sure he cleans up that chair after the shift, man. I don't want Opie sitting in shit when he comes in tomorrow morning. I'm telling you right now, Opie is going to be sitting in a ch shit chair all morning. There is no shit on this chair. Did you or did you not fart? I did not fart. Ryder, what did it sound like? Fart. Like, I found no one asked you to act it out. We act it out. Okay. Well, it must, he must have had uh, Rice Krispies because I, <laughs> I thought I heard a snap, crackle, and then the pop. But it was like. Are you insane? It was no, because it seemed like your ass was put put puttering to push it out. And then when you finally pushed it out, it was like a little bit of a pop. But the the key is the put puts did it occur the. Then he sat here with a big eyes like he was fucking stymie, and he just saw a magic trick. Uh, Sherry, you're on running Fez. Yeah, hey, I wanted to stand up for Fez. That definitely was not a fart. Hmm. Thank you. It, it was, uh, you, need, you probably need to get that dead mouse out of your ass, though. That, <laughs> no mistaking the last breath of a dying mouse. That's basically what it did sound like. Feel proud of yourself, Sherry? Big woman today? Oh, let me see. You're going to attack her and Bobo. That's the ones you fight back with. I'm just pointing it out to her. What? I haven't attacked at all. She got off a fucking wonderful line. Have you gotten an email from Bobo yet? Oh, I haven't checked. Tear stained email? Stop it. Bobo's the best. Everybody loves Bobo. I like Bobo. And by the way, the gig that we're doing, 
I'm giving two tickets to ADF and his chick to end this thing and come out. All right? So well, that's all back to normal. ADF's going to be there. Yeah. I want him standing next to Bobo and each of them knowing what it's like to be picked on. Now, uh, I got an email this morning I haven't talked to you guys about. Mikey D wants to put his band back together and come out and play during the commercial breaks. Oh, boy. Hmm. I forget the name of them. I think it's Sparkle Motion is the name of the band, but I'm not exactly sure. I think you're right there. It's not much of a rock name, Sparkle Motion. No, it doesn't, you know, make you feel like, all right, I'm going to a rock show here. Right. Uh, Earl, what's your feeling? We get the band back together? What are they called? U.S. Steel or something? What is it? It's um, a Crank Call. Crankcase. Crankcase. Um, you hip to it? g in the band, Jersey Rich. Um, and then I don't know the other guys. I don't know the other guys either, but... Um, Lorden. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a long time ago. Oh. And they had a fight with him. He was mad over the fact no one liked his stand-up. As a matter of fact, I don't know if anyone's seen him since. Well, we can't have a band that's doing stand up too. If you're just if you're gonna be there, you gotta just rock. We can't have a band who's doing that stand up. That's for sure. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> you know, there's got to be some kind of laughter in it. Um, Ryder claims that he plays the drums. Maybe he could play one fucking song. Ryder, you you claim you're a drummer, right? Absolutely, Danny. I played the drums, I played the bongos, I played all percussion, baby. I learned in the little towns of Wichita and Cheyenne. Oh, there's, there's two places that aren't even close to each other. Absolutely. Well, when you ride, they're very close, Ron and B. This fucking character is just really worn out. It's welcome. <laughs> I'm know. honestly wondering what goes first, the character or the hat, because they're both falling <laughs> apart in front of me. That may be the way to go. Have crankcase, but just the Midnight Rider on drums. Give I don't it. know which one. Who's their drummer? Mikey D. It is? Yeah, and his dick is broke. Oh, yeah. Yeah, can he even go out? Yeah, I think he can. Dave, you're on Ron and Fez. Yeah, buddy. Hey, why does Fezzy's fart smell like Vaseline? Uh, Rich. Rich, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ron. Yeah. I know you can tell if Fez farted. Is he uh, sitting in a puddle of boy cum? Everybody's just on today. They're just lightning fast today. They just got it down. Dennis, you're running Fez. Hey, you buddies. Hey, Fezzy, I was just wondering, do you have to wear a bib when you let out that ass burp? Where would I wear it? Around my ass? Makes makes no sense. Uh, Jim, Jim, you're running Fez. Hey, hey. Yeah. Um, I just want to say, have the chance to say goodbye to Earl before the review tomorrow. I think he did a good job the first year. He's slacking a little bit. And the one hundred fly, uh, one hundred flowers thing is just a nail in the coffin. Earl, you'll get a new job. Keep your head up high, buddy, and I love you. Later. Tomorrow, you're sitting down for that review, Earl? Yes, I am. Could not come at a worse time. You're barely hanging on right now. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to pass this review with, with flying colors. You want Fez and I to lie for you? Why do you have to lie for me? To say that the truth didn't happen. So certainly, you won't get fired. It's the only way to survive. We don't want you to get fired. I'm going to tell them that you do your work and you get in here on time. Even though the writer says you're the last to get here every day. Yeah, I'm the last to get in, but I'm not like here at straight up 12 o'clock like he claims. Yeah, but that's nothing. Well, bring that up during your review. I get here before the show starts. Most of the time. Except for if it's really cold out, and I say my feet have frozen to death. It's a transit strike. I couldn't help that. Everybody else got in. Why don't you ride that old bicycle of yours? The one really big wheel up front, the little tiny one that you've had. That's how fucking used this parents got him a bike. A gigantic wheel up front, tiny one in the back. Didn't Debo take it off of him? What about the eggplant queens? Why aren't we rocking with Mike in the Eggplant Queens? I think Mike is, uh, doesn't even talk to us anymore. I think it's since the day you said something about his chick. I did? You said that his chick wanted to get everybody fighting at the last uh, party we had. Uh, I don't even remember. I think they took it the wrong way. You know, your sense of humor is awful, Fez. You're a p terrible person. I don't think so. Ask Bobo. 
S A D F. Bobo's the one call, going around calling people old leper lips. Oh, A D F yeah. is the one going to parties, dining out that he saw Fez on Fifth Avenue, and then making up the story that I looked homeless. 